Marketer of the Day, Episode 684, Relieve Entrepreneurial Stress, Live in the Present, Build Rapport, and Communicate Better with Kathy Groover. Hey everyone and welcome back to the Marketer of the Day podcast. We are joined by return guest Dr. Kathy Groover and you can find her other appearance at marketeroftheday.com forward slash 211. And Dr. Kathy Groover, PhD, has been on stages on four continents. She has two TEDx talks and she hosts a TV show based on her first book, which is called The Alternative Medicine Cabinet. And she has a ton of books, including Conquer Your Stress, Workplace Wellness, and The Journey of Healing. And we are going to be talking today about stress, communication, and mindset, and how you can be the best that you can be, and how to navigate the, all of this internal dialogue, internal struggle that is being uh, an entrepreneur, along with all the uncertainty, but also excitement that comes along with that. So, Kathy, glad to be talking to you. Oh, glad to be back. Thanks so much for having me. Glad to have you back. It has been a few years, so what have you been up to? Oh, geez. Okay. So I finished a couple more books. I think I'm up to seven now. I'm working on my then continuing to speak around the world, added, like you said, a second TEDx talk and started doing a lot of coaching, a lot more travel. So yeah, things have been amazing. It's been an, a, quite the journey. Super cool. I mean, living that limited amount of time left in life that we all have, we don't know how much might be years, decades, but you might as well make the most of it and not just sit home watching TV, wishing one and wondering what could have been. So in these last few years when you've been a world traveler and a book writer, I'm interested in what you would say is your big idea lately or what has been your focus or, you know, with all the, the various minutia going on, has you been circling back or recurring back to just the same thing or something that like you just, you can't ignore, can't get rid of as far like, idea wise? Yeah. You know, I've actually sort of expanded that. That's a great question. So I started out in the massage world and then I kept adding modalities and things to that. And so I still have a massage practice and a hypnotherapy practice here in Santa Barbara, which I'm in the process of sort of shutting down and shifting my focus. So rather than doing so much hands-on, I'm actually doing more coaching and more speaking. So it's the same basic. Um, subject matter it's just executed in a different way uh so i tell people i just i follow the breadcrumbs so i just end up where the universe takes me i say yes to everything uh and i'm finding myself here so i'm doing so much more coaching and so much more speaking and i've added communication to my list of uh topics so not only doing the stress talks that i've been doing for quite some time but also added sort of you know communication and mindset stuff which i'm really excited about because i love doing the communication work so yeah, I'm just, I'm expanding what I'm doing and shifting a little bit, but not, not too far off the realm of what I've already been doing. Fantastic. So you're not throwing away old things and starting something new. You're, you're always transitioning, right? You're always evolving. And, and this is, I've seen this as a recurring theme and because I've had a lot of these guests back after two or three years and it's like, they're, they're kind of in the same uh, category or topic, but mm -hmm. the specific subtopics or the niches themselves have evolved and they figured out things that have worked better. And something that was really reassuring to me maybe in the past year or so was that idea of if you think back years ago in something stupid that you did or something that makes you cringe now, that's a good thing, right? Because if you look, if you think back 10 years ago and think, cool, I'm exactly in the same place I was and I feel just as good about myself back then as I do now, that doesn't seem like you've grown much, but that was just an interesting just way of maybe reframing things or waking myself up of realizing that if you look back at the past and cringe, then that means that that you've evolved. And so uh, ideally, you should always be having those thoughts, right? You should always be looking back at, well, five years ago, I kind of cringe at how I might have been speaking or, or doing something or made this mistake. And five years before that, I cringe, you know, in like, a positive way, but you know, we're always evolving. And so you say that you're now evolving into communication. So what does that mean exactly? Well, one of the things that I really focus on is for, I have a background as an actor. Uh, I'm sure we talked about the last time we interviewed this, but I have a background in improv improvisation. I've been doing that since about seventh grade. And I see this huge parallel. And this is a huge thing in business right now. So many corporations, associations, companies are bringing in improv groups and business improv groups, and they're adding that to their communication skills, which I think is, one, not only fun, just because that's my background, but I think it's incredibly helpful. 
So my communication program is a combo of what I've learned from years of performing and doing improv, um, NLP, which is neurolinguistic programming, and also um, sort of looking at how people communicate their communication style and how that translates to others. Because we assume we're fabulous communicators, right? If something goes awry, we always blame the other person. We were perfectly fine in our communication. They were stupid enough to not get it. Um, and I, we can't change anybody else's communication style. We can't change what they're doing and how they're perceiving what we're saying. All we can do is change ourselves. So I do anywhere from a you know, 45 minute to four hour workshop about communication style and how you can really get your message across reach it across to introverts, extroverts, different generations, different ways of learning, uh, building that rapport with people. And so it's, uh, yeah, it's been a blast. I really love the new topic. So it's been a lot of fun. Fantastic. And what I really liked about what you said there is that you can't change everyone else, right? It w wouldn't, it, wouldn't life be so much easier if we could just get everyone thinking and, t and talking the same way that we do, and then that we could just kick back and just be ourselves. But I mean, you're so right that you have to meet people where they're at, right? And, right. and and listen and observe and those sorts of things. And But also, I'm sure that, that you can relate to wanting to avoid the usual dreary, corporate-y communication stuff, right? You want to avoid having a list of tips and telling people to, you know, nod, nod when you listen and restate <laughs> things back to them, right? So, so along those lines, like, how do you make this whole communication thing fun and interesting in the same way you're saying that like, you know, uh, companies bring an improv group. So what is your equivalent to the improv group to make things more exciting? Yeah. Well, and I don't talk about that typical, I mean, we, yes, we have to listen and the, you know, the, the nonverbal of the nodding and the smiling and the repeating back and the, the mirroring back what they say, it does make you feel heard and it does indicate to the other person that you understand what they're saying. So sure. I tell people to, you know, say back what they said. Uh, but the other thing I talk about is, you know, well, there's three different types of learners. There's, I mean, there's more than that, but there's visual, auditory, and there's kinesthetic. And so if you know what type of learner the person is, you're going to be more apt to communicate efficiently with them. So I'm a visual kinesthetic learner. So if you just go off and keep talking to me about how to do something, I am not going to understand a word you're saying. You might as well play white noise. It does not work for me. So I'm a trapeze artist. And I had one coach that kept explaining to me something verbally, and I was so not get. I just I couldn't do it. I was just not getting what he was saying to me. And I had a coach the next night who actually got me down on the ground, put me in the position physically, showed me what to do, and I got it immediately. So it's a matter of understanding your learning style, observing other people's communication and learning style. And if you understand that, then you're going to get your communication across better. So if you have to have a meeting with someone and they're an auditory learner, calling them on the phone is probably fine. If they're a visual kinesthetic, they want a Zoom call, they want to see you in their office, they want to see you in person. So it's just one of those little tricks that I kind of teach people to build rapport. I talk a lot about body language. Um, I talk about how to deal with some conflict, things like that. But I make it funny. I tell stories about how I failed in communication. Um, I have some exercises that I can do if I have enough time in the talk. So yeah, it's loads of fun. It's It goes really well with, the, with all the stress work that I've been doing for so long because if there's stress in communication... Ooh, it does not work. So yeah, it's, it's been a nice combo. Super cool. And the way that you explain that, it seems like that's kind of like the low hanging fruit, right? Because it's, it's easy in, to be in a situation and say, well, you need to keep in mind these 12 different things, right? And, and get deep into NLP land and say, look at the breathing, look at where, where their eyes are looking. Uh, and, right. and then you, you end up just like having to monitor a million things at once. And so this is great because we could all just start with this and try to notice and pick up if someone is a visual, auditory, or kinesthetic learner, or, or maybe some blend of both. And you know, you mentioned just now about calling on the phone versus the, a Zoom call. And I've been getting these podcast interviews uh, meeting in a Zoom room right now, but only recording the audio. And it seems like things go a lot smoother. I can't exactly put my finger on it exactly, but I feel like when I'm listening and even if the other person's not on a camera if i am and i'm nodding it seems like the, the flow is better and they don't mm -hmm. need to stop as much for me to, to for me to say keep going or for me to uh keep things going. it seems like the like the answers of my guests are just like longer and they make more sense and it's just not as abrupt with the the starting and stopping and mm -hmm. uh and i've just noticed like in general people that i've been needing to meet with 
uh, before I would, you know, do just an audio Skype call if I needed to meet with like, uh, uh, you know, a freelance worker or a joint venture partner or a business partner or something. I used to just call on the phone and, and I would think to myself, well, talking on the phone, that's like uh, I'm sending an email. But instead of writing all these words, I just speak the words and hear the words on the phone. But then now that we all have the technology and the fast Internet connection to be on video chat for a lot of things at first, I just didn't think there was much added to it but you definitely i don't know like feel better or feel mm -hmm. more like you can relate to the person just by having them there on camera and by you being on camera just feel, i don't know it's a closer to being in the room with them i didn't realize how important that was until doing a lot of the video chats as opposed to just the audio phone call so what, I, what i'm getting from you from you, you saying that is that since it's so simple now get on camera or get on video chat for like any reason possible as opposed to a phone call if you can because there's just more connection there right yeah and you get to you you do get those body cues now i mean i know i can see you you can't see me because i cheated and didn't turn my video on this morning uh but it's nice because i can see you nodding i can tell when you're done talking and that i can start and i had i was so used to doing uh, you know, radio shows and things around the country with the video. And I was asked to do a spot on um, this big news network in London, Sky News London. It was the morning show. And I'm you know, up at midnight because of the time, di a time difference. I'm on the, on the West Coast of the States and they were in the UK. And so I'm in my office and I've got as many lights on as I can to make sure I look presentable. And they start the show and I cannot see any of the other people I'm talking to. So I was getting no visual cues at all as to when they wanted me to say something. And it was so hard for me because I couldn't tell when they were done talking. I couldn't tell if there was someone else about to speak. And it was this, just the most awkward interview because I had no idea when it was my turn to talk, uh, which was kind of surprising to me because I would think on a new show, I would be able to see the people that I was you know, conversing with. And I remember, you know, listening back and you can see my face at moment, just kind of like looking confused of, was it my, should I, is it, okay? you know, there's the, there was that hesitation. So I agree with you. If you can get on um, some sort of visual medium, I think that's best. And this is one of the big issues I see now with um, people up, you know, coming up only using social media is two of the things we're immediately able to do as children is recognize facial expression and tone of voice. And with all the texting that people are doing, they never have that face-to-face. -face. So they can't recognize those facial expressions. They're not able to hear that tone of voice because they're just typing. And so I think a lot of our interpersonal communication is failing because we can't get that tone. We don't know if someone's joking. You know, how many times have we sent an email that's completely misunderstood because we put our tone on it, sarcastic or otherwise, and that's not what they meant. So I think getting back to the face-to-face -face or at least be able to hear the person i think that's going to be such a huge boom to our communication so that's i yeah i agree with totally what you just said and i mean you can't win with with the written emails because either it's too short or too long right either it's so short that there's too much ambiguity don't get the message across or you make it long enough to hit all your bases but then no one will read all that and they they get the information that they only want anyway and what and what me, you made me think of when you're explaining that is that being visually on video it almost gives people the ability to give like a, a soft yes or a soft no so like we mentioned before that if one person's naughty you know to keep going but even mm -hmm. if things if the conversation kind of needs to g not go in that direction or it like me as a podcast host if i need to kind of just wrap up the question i'm asking and, and pass it back to that if they are if they're starting to begin to look bored if they're starting to look away if they're not quite there yet mm -hmm then it, I don't have to wait until it's too late. I don't have to wait until they interrupt me. And then also what you're making me think of is sometimes the other person will just be like breathing out and then I'll think, oh no, is it, do I, did I say something wrong or did you need to pass it back? Mm -hmm. So yeah, it, like it gets a lot of the, the uh, misunderstandings uh, out of the way there. And so you mentioned that uh, a, a little bit about how you, you had some uh, interesting stories or some fun uh, things happening with some of these clients that you've helped. So does anything, I don't know, just uh, just fu fun and exciting come to mind as far as all these people that you've been helping lately with communication and stress? Uh, do you, as a, a story come to mind that you think could be especially helpful for us today? 
Uh, yeah, it's, it, there is. So I was, I do a lot of work with 911 dispatchers and first responders. And I was brought into a county and I did a four hour workshop for them on stress, a little bit of the communication stuff. And then I was seeing coaching clients after that. So for four hours, I coached in little half hour segments. And some of it was, oh, hey, yes, I'd love to talk to the coach. And some of it was the, the uh, uh, manager going, you need to go talk to the coach. Which, of course, those people were a little more resistant because all of a sudden the manager is telling them that they need to go talk to me, which I'm sure was a little scary and or intimidating, whatever. And I was told ahead of time that there had been some conflict between two employees. And so from 10 to 10.30, I saw employee A. And from 10.30 to 11, I saw employee B, completely unbeknownst to each other, not knowing that I was seeing the other one and not knowing the management had filled me in on what had actually happened. So it was fascinating to see two people who were in the exact same situation perceive everything so vastly differently. I mean, it's was the other you know, three sides to every story, his side, her side, what actually happened. Um, it was pretty much what that was. And I heard the same story from two different perspectives from these different employees. And it was so vastly different. There was so much misunderstanding and so much um, taking things personally that didn't need to be taken personally. So one of the things I always say to people is, do I know that to be true? You know, if you wave to me in the parking lot and I don't wave back, are you taking that personally that I'm ignoring you? Maybe consider I didn't see you. I'm having a bad day. Uh, I'm not wearing my glasses. So I just saw this blurry thing. You know, we tend to take things so personally. And it was just such a fascinating thing to watch these two people be so offended by what the other one did. And if you would step back, you'd see there was no mean, you know, no meanness to it. It was purely their misinterpretation of a situation. And it was great for me because I was able to point that out to the other one and help reconcile that conflict in the office, which I thought was a huge win. And um, so that was sort of the first thing that popped in is just, you know, that misinterpretation of that, that us taking things personally, rather than actually verifying, is that true? Do I know that to be true? Am I making up stories? Am I fatalizing? Am I, you know, having these, these um, misconceptions of what's actually happening? So it was an interesting one. It was the first time I got to hear two sides of the same story so close together like that. It was hilarious. It was actually kind of funny. I'm sitting there listening and going, oh, that's not what they said happened. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it was kind of fascinating. It sounds almost like a, a police interrogation, right? When they, they separate two people and totally. have each in the other room and just try to try to get the facts straight. But what that makes me think of is just how we, we all think that we can be 100% aware of all the things happening. And, and we're probably only aware of, of a handful of things. I mean, if we try to think about who was driving in the what color was the car behind us three days ago in right. at, at going to lunch? We have no idea, but we we I think it took me a long time to let go of the fact that okay, my 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 brain is not a videotape recorder. It's not going to notice every single single thing. It's only probably going to notice a handful of things. Mm -hmm. And so if someone else is having a bad day, or maybe I think that they're being rude or dissing me, or if, uh, you know, even like a, if a customer has a chip on their shoulder, it's probably not me. And it might not, I might just, I might be in a bad mood. And then because that's just what's on my mind, then it's like, that's what I see. Right. And right, I'm sure you, you would come across that too. Like if, if we're in a, a good mood or we're in a bad mood, like sometimes we just notice us and other people and that's all we're picking up and it's, it's not a hundred percent uh, objective. So, so that's huge there. And so, um, so we, we've so far, re we said just to recap a little bit, we've said that it's important to uh, notice if someone is visual, audio, or kinesthetic, that way we can meet them where they're at. And it's also important for us to uh, observe and, and take the time and ask ourselves, this thing that I think is happening is this really true? That way we don't jump to conclusions and then we jump to other conclusions based on those conclusions. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, nothing, nothing is, is real anymore. Uh, and then, so as far as you personally, I know that you, like you said, you have a lot going on. You've been traveling, writing the books, doing the trapeze artist stuff. Have you personally had any like breakthroughs or ahas or like struggles that you've had to overcome lately that you think could be helpful for us? Oh, yeah. It, this was a rough year for me. Uh, about a year ago right now, I left my 20-year relationship. So that was really tough. And about four months ago, my father passed away. And my father was my best friend. So that it's been a, it's been a year of um, navigating loss and navigating sort of like grief and mourning. But what I found with that is 
the more present you can stay, the less that affects you. Now, certainly I was devastated when my father died and I was devastated that my marriage broke up. And I realized it's me identifying with those thought forms and identifying with that, like dwelling in the past and worrying about the future thing that made it worse. Um, so to the extent that we can stay present, and I teach that so much in my stress reduction stuff, um, to the extent that we can stay present, uh, all of that stress and all of that suffering is someplace else. We drag that around in the thoughts that we're thinking. So in this present moment, ask yourself what is actually wrong? <laughs> because oftentimes it's stuff from the past and stuff in the future. And we're, we're pulling that back into this present moment. And I had a friend who once said, if you have one foot in the past and one foot but in the future, you end up peeing all over the present, which I thought was really funny and, you know, slightly obscene, but, you know, profound at the same time, because it's true. It's like, are we just here or are our minds going to this other thing? And are we bringing the negative stuff into where it shouldn't be? So it was a big lesson for me to, uh, to go through two huge losses like that and have the ability to still stay present and function as well as I did. I was actually surprised at how well I did after my father passed away. I think it's all these years of work on uh, mindfulness and stress reduction. It, it helped. I got to use it. I got to use it on myself. So it was pretty, pretty fascinating. And uh, yeah, and that, that's great that it's, it's not just theory, right? It's not just concepts. It's not just something to teach to others. It's something that, that we can apply even when those things get tough. And uh, like, there's something I saw recently that was just along the lines of like, most of our suffering happens in our imagination, right? Let's say that uh, in the past or in the future, that's all in your head. What about in the actual reality? You're probably not suffering nearly as much as you are just in, in your own uh, imaginary dream world. And my, my life completely changed when I, I was angry about, I don't even remember anymore, but there was something I was angry about. And a friend of mine asked, well, why are you angry? And just like that simple question, I just, I just thought, huh, like there's something to that, to th thinking about what I'm thinking about and, and maybe decoding that and, you know, getting into that, that mindfulness uh, thing and maybe being in tune of that internal dialogue and realizing that a lot of the thoughts and things that we, we think throughout the day are repeat thoughts and it's just been the same old stuff again and again and some of it is negative and the first step is in realizing that that we're, we're thinking those things and to to do our best and try to change those and, and make sure that the, the thoughts that we have are, are helpful and are serving us and aren't just uh, dragging uh, us down. So, so yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm sorry that you had that stuff to go through, but it's, it's good that you have the, the tools to get through it and that we all need. And like, you know, I also had a friend recently who she wasn't like a real heavy uh, drinker party animal. She's someone like I've never met in person, just like an online friend, but she said like she gave up drinking for, I don't know, X number of months just to, you know, just mm -hmm. to clear things out. And she said that the biggest benefit was in processing emotions. Oh, and okay. she, yeah, I, th I thought that, that was simple, but huge. Like, I think she's only, you know, had some alcohol like once every two weeks or something, but went to nothing. And then suddenly like just was able to kind of just eat away and, and work on things that, that she was dragging around. So I thought, huh, like, I think that's a really important but maybe understated skill of being able to get through the the crap and get through the things that that are, are hurting us. So, I mean, yeah, there, there's been a lot of uh, really helpful things for us to focus on. And I want to make sure that we cover the uh, all of your recent uh, achievements and things you've set up. So if people say, you know, I, I like what Kathy has to say today about some of this mindfulness, communication, stress, just mindset stuff in general, where can people find you? Where can they find about your books, programs, TEDx talks, uh, all those sorts of things? Yeah, absolutely. So the best place is my site. It's kathygruver.com. And then I'm also all over social media. So LinkedIn and Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. I think that's all I've got. Uh, but it's either typically Dr. Kathy Groover or just Kathy Groover. So love to connect with everybody. I love answering questions. And again, the one-on-one -on -one coaching and the speaking are just two of my absolute passions. So any way I can help out and it's, yeah, it's kathygruber.com. Fantastic. So to spell that out, that is K-A-T-H-Y-G-R-U-V-E-R.com. That's kathygruber.com. And you're so right, Kathy, that, that it's, it's so great that this option of one-on-one -on -one coaching is available and it's so widespread and so many times we just need to schedule 
one session and talk things out and get a real live human helping us out because if people are listening to today's episode and this is really interesting them then maybe there's something to be done here either to overcome a problem or if things are great maybe people say well i can do even better right i can do even better as far as my business or think bigger or be more productive or have a better relationship with my family so that way my business doesn't suffer and if that is you out there in podcast land if you want to dig slightly deeper into this mind brain happiness emotion stuff then go to kathygroover.com c-a-t-h-y-g-r-u-v-e-r.com and while you're at it make sure to add kathy on linkedin facebook Twitter or Instagram, whichever platform you prefer, it's always good to have some friends like that who are posting helpful things because if you try to get rid of all your bad emotions that aren't helping you or you try to improve your attitude, you will just be completely overwhelmed. This is the kind of thing that takes everyday diligence a little bit and it might take years to get from point A to point B. So why not get started today? And add Kathy on social media and go to that website, kathygroover.com. And thanks, Kathy, for stopping by and telling us what we need to know today. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Please subscribe, rate, and review our show at marketerofthedaycom slash iTunes and like us on Facebook at marketerofthedaycom slash Facebook. Mm-hmm.